What's up, jammies? Welcome back to another episode of Ricky's Ram Jam presented by Barefoot Wine. And the Barefoot Wine is flowing. Let's hit it! Mm, mm, yeah! Barefoot Wine is flowing in Club Dub this week. It's Club Dub. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, you like that music? That's right. We are feeling the energy in Club Dub this week. I've got Moscato for those feeling sweet. A little Cab Sav if you're feeling dangerous. Or Pink Moscato on draft for those just wanting to vibe out and clubbed up. Oh, yes. It feels so good. We're back in the studio this week feeling amazing. Um, I'm, you know, celebrating after that TNF win. Like I said, I lost my voice from yelling like a maniac at the end of that down in, in the fourth quarter. Um, I just can't put into words how much fun that was. So... You know, my voice is barely making its way back, but we're back. The Rams are back. We're back practicing. I'm back at the facility. Everything is great. Um, it's right before the holidays. I'm feeling awesome. I'm filled with cheer and joy. And joining me today is a Super Bowl champion, so that's super exciting, and that's pretty cool. But before he, he joins me, I want to talk about the Monday night game, okay? So I'm hosting an influencer party at a venue in West Hollywood for Barefoot and the Rams, and I'm so excited for it. We're going to have Roland Williams will be there, and I'm going to chat with him before the game. It'll be so much fun, and there's some friends and some new friends that are coming to this game. Um, just to be able to like be at an event with Barefoot and the Rams ahead of this Monday night game, coming off of the energy of the Thursday Thursday night game. I'm just so excited for Monday night. I like it can't get here soon enough. So hurry up this mini buy. I know they need time and Baker needs to be, you know, really busy, but but I just I'm excited for Monday night. Also, like later today as we're taping this, I'm, you know, the Rams are doing so much in the community because it's the holidays. So I am um, going to the holiday shopping spree for 100 kids with the Salvation Army um, and Nickelodeon to volunteer with the Rams, which I think it's like one of the, what was that Leslie Jones show where you like shopping spree and you run through and throw things in the cart? That's what I'm picturing it's like. So I think every volunteer has a kid that they're going to take shopping. Um at a Walmart. So I'm just like super excited for this. So that's later today. There's just so much going on in Ramsland this week and it's just amazing. So it's a party this week on Ricky's Ram Jam, like I said. So I've got a fun fan question and let's do that. Reminder to send your question in to Ricky's Ram Jam at rams.nfl.com. So this is from Jamie M from Anaheim. Hey Ricky, loving the show. Please tell me you will get to have Baker on after that win. Go Rams. Okay, I wish. I wish I could say Baker's coming to sit down this week with me or next week or the week after. But I think he's probably the busiest guy on planet Earth the next few weeks, like working through the playbook and getting to know the guys on the squad. I'd love to sit down with him maybe in the offseason. But for now, I want to let Bake bake. You know, I'm appreciating the beauty from afar. Just want to give him time to get used to L.A. But I think I want to talk. I want to be like, hey, what restaurants are you going to? Where are you getting settled in? But he doesn't have time for that right now because it is all Rams all the time right now. Um, but let the record show, and I'm going to talk about it with my guest in a minute, that I was feeling very confident Thursday night and with him in the lineup. And I made that known. And there are receipts to prove that. As you know, Jammies, we love football and we love our sponsor, Barefoot Wine. You know, wine and football aren't that different. Sure, they can be complex, but enjoying them should be easy. And both are easier to enjoy with friends. So I'm happy to be pairing my Barefoot Wine with my wonderful friend and guest today, DeMarco Farr. Zappinen. How are you? Wear the leather pants. I don't wear leather pants. That's yeah, but, you. But you have to now. Why after... do I have to wear leather pants? Because... It was just a vibe. I think I saw Mina Kimes tweet that w all the people are asking for you in leather pants. Yeah, th there are dimensions to leather pants, and <laughs> I, yeah, I exceed those. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't wear leather pants. Okay, yeah, that would be bad. But like, maybe it wouldn't. Maybe it would start a whole fashion. Trend. How about a jacket? Can yep. I wear a leather jacket? You can. I think I can get away with that. And yeah, some, and some boots or something. Yeah, yeah okay. Maybe some knee highs. I don't knee know. Highs? Yeah, <laughs> knee highs. After some barefoot one. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah. go. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Okay, so. Defensive tackle for the Rams. Yes. Uh, you won a Super Bowl. Yes. Recorded, what, eight and a half sacks I that season? I did it season? all by myself. Wow. <laughs> More importantly, your Twitter bio says Star Wars enthusiast. Big time. Take me through that. I'm a nerd. Of course. Okay. I look, I grew up on Star Wars. I was that kid that used to camp out. This is before you could buy tickets, you know, on the internet. Mm. I would camp out and wait for the box office to open and then go buy my tickets. I was either first or second. Had to be. Okay. Was, What's your favorite? Favorite what? film all of them 
All of them, even the new ones. Even Anything the, related to Star Wars. Even the I'm prequels in. that were like hated. Across I love the them all. See, I can't believe people. If you love Star Wars, then you love every single thing about it. There okay. are no bad Star Wars movies. Okay. See, what's wrong with that? Nothing. I think it's. I think it's great. There's never enough. You need more. I want more. Keep the story going. Okay. Yeah, but it is cool though. I mean, like I, I grew up on it, and now I have a seven year old daughter, and she likes it. So, what a concept. Yeah. It's carried on. It'll pass on through generations now it's crazy okay you have a chance to come back drink the goblet of life um, yeah. indiana jones style you can either go back and win a super bowl again on the field or you could be like a luke skywalker oh, or wow <laughs> that's well, hard man yeah right that's hard you uh, could be, the not super even bowl the, is everything it is it's everything to win um it's it, wow or be a jedi yeah like have my own lightsaber yep and like x-wing yep and i could Jump to light speed anytime. Yep. Oh boy! Wow. Sorry, fellas. <laughs> you heard it here first. Okay, but before we were recording, we were talking about this, and you were you said okay, defensive tackle. I was Aaron Donald before Aaron Donald. Yeah. And I asked you point blank, well, who do you think's better? Well, okay, I'll say this. Okay, look, um, I only say that for people like you played defensive tackle. Yeah, I played the same as Aaron, so I was Aaron before Aaron, but. So here's my story, right? I will never take a backseat to anybody. So there's a guy I started with in the Super Bowl, um, Ray Agnew. He is the assistant GM in Detroit. Love this dude. He is my favorite guy. We have gone through the fire together. I would go to war for him any day. So, And he feels the same about me. And we were competitors. So I told him and Aaron, um, Aaron is special. So I said, if the three of us played in the same era, one of us is going to the bench, and it damn sure ain't going to be me. So... You two have at it. Absolutely. Okay. I'm on the field. You think? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm fighting my way on that field. Okay. But Aaron is special. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. So Ray is taking the bench. I'm just saying. It's up, <laughs> it's up to those two. And I'm not playing nose tackle. You hear that, Ray? Yeah. He's coming for you. I don't know. Or maybe Aaron. I don't know. Maybe I'm, we've I'm got... not playing nose tackle. Okay. Yeah, you're not getting me to do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so... How does winning a Super Bowl on the field compare to winning as a broadcaster? Like, what was wow. last year like compared to winning? Uh, very Man, different. Man, okay, JB was just in here. And you know JB. JB gives it all every game. So, and I'm on the field, so I finally made my way up after going through the ticker tape, seeing all the guys on the field, and I made it back to the booth. And JB was in his chair, which is not normal because he usually stands up, but he was completely gassed. Because he had gave it all. And I just heard the whole broadcast. I could hear it. Uh, and then to see him just winded was something. So I felt that way. As a broadcaster, it was a long season. It was fun. You live and die, but you really don't have a say in the matter. You just have to call the game. Um, so it's awesome to see that team go from training camp to win a Super Bowl as a broadcaster. But as a player, I I've said this before, and I, I mean this. When we won the Super Bowl, it felt I could literally feel the earth being round, and it felt like we were on top. That's how it felt. There yeah. were no more games. Football was over. We were the champ. So nothing will ever replace that. That is more special than anything. Except, Unless you're a Jedi. Except for being a Jedi. Right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, player first, broadcaster, close second. Okay. So, yeah, I think it's a very cool – we were sort of talking about this on, on Between the Horns last week, just about how all of us felt – such a, a sense of relief after that Thursday night game because every week, week in and week out, and by no means am I comparing to what the players are going through week in, mm -hmm. week out, but we're also there too, and it is such a special feeling to watch these guys pull off a win like that, and I felt it. like I, That's why my voice sounds like this. And, and you get close to the team, and you know, and you understand, and then you start to see what they went through to get there. You know, how many guys you lost when OBJ gets hurt. Uh, Higby's on the bench. Robert Woods is already on the bench. And it's just like kind of Stafford that line in Cooper Cup. How are we going to make this work? And boom, they put it in the end zone. And then you're thinking on the other side, God, do we need a hero? Oh, he's wearing 99. Right. You know, and you've seen this movie before. So it's it, it's awesome. The other side for a broadcaster leading up, because we did a lot of interviews, right? Um, can I just be frank for a minute? Yeah. We talked a lot of yeah <laughs> right so i'm like you guys better win this damn game right yeah or we won't be able to show our faces sorry right? adam yeah, yeah. sorry our, our producer is like grimacing his teeth because now he's going to be editing all this yeah no i mean it is it you we were feeling no pain i mean i was feeling no pain and i was at nfl network i wasn't even with the rams i was just like this is the, i just thought it was a total shoe in and then the game happens and yeah. then it's joe burrow and all of a sudden it's it's getting I, it was 
a very, very exciting up and down game. So my respect for Burrow went through the roof. Yeah. I, I liked him from afar. You see him on highlights, college, what have you. But to see him up close and to know what the Rams. Kid. See, I didn't want to go there. I was just talking to about on the field. To see him up close. Woo-hoo. Garoppolo Good. or Burrow? I'm Burrow. Really? Yeah. Okay, what is this Garoppolo thing? He's a very, very good looking guy. Very good looking. Um, I didn't know that. I had no idea. Really? I had no idea Garoppolo was like handsome. You can't like look at a guy and just be like, that's a very good looking man. It just man. doesn't compute. I mm. see quarterback, mm. you know? Gotcha. Um, right. What about like a Brad Pitt? Okay, that's different. He's an actor. Like he's he, got lighting and, and smoke and true, you know all that true, stuff. Very true, very Garoppolo's true. Garoppolo's a guy that he's a target to me. He's a very good looking guy. Great hair, great smile. Burrow though, the smile on Burrow, nine times out of ten. Stafford, great smile. Okay, see, I didn't, I didn't know all this mm. stuff. See, uh, th- they're all ugly to me. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're quarterbacks. But um, yeah, I mean, just uh, my respect for him went way through the roof because I know what the Rams had to do. And what they were throwing at him. And the guy just refused to go away. You have to respect that. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's why I feel like that that ring me Aaron Donald thing it just it plays in my head all the time. It's just such an, such an iconic moment. Speaking of iconic moments, Baker Mayfield comes in to the Rams last week on maybe, you know, a 15-minute nap. And then takes them 98 yards to win the game. We were there, like we said in the beginning. I was in leather pants. I knew it from the start. I called it from the field. <laughs> and and I was like, I'm feeling dangerous. Yeah. And you guys were kind of laughing at me. And I was like, just wait. Just wait. Okay, I'm trying to, like, dangerous in Mayfield. Did I miss something? Is Do you that remember a co- the morning that when he was with the Browns and he had the, like, trench coat on and the, the mustache and they won a big game and at the press conference after he was just like, I woke up feeling dangerous. He said that. He said he oh, woke up okay. feeling dangerous. Honestly, I ignored everything about him yeah. until he got here. Right. I mean, unless it was something, you know, that was newsworthy or, or commercial. So... This is weird. This business is strange, isn't it? Right. It's like Cobra Kai. Yeah. We're now friends with John Lawrence. Right. You know, the bad guy. He, he's, he's the bad guy of, of, of the NFL, and now he's your quarterback and you're rooting for him. It's weird how that happens. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So the Rams head to Green Bay for another primetime game. Okay, so it's going to be, what, negative 1,000. Mm-hmm. Um, you were just talking about packing oh, cold clothes. Can I throw something out? Yes. I am bitter at JB and Maurice and Adam and Dodie. Because you have to be on the field? Because they were making fun of it. Like, they, they uh, JB tweeted out, like, the weather report for yep. Green Bay on Monday yep. and said, oh, guys, we're going to close the, the broadcast window. Booth, yeah. And I'm on the chat, too. So I'm the only one that's not going to be in the room. I'm going to be out on the field, and these guys are tweeting about, oh, it's going to be cold. It's what if you bring, like, a portable, like, heat lamp? Do you think that would, like, you know, discredit No, I'm, I'm you? going down there to freeze because of those guys now. Yeah. I want them to feel it. I'm hurt. Yeah. I'm hurt. But, yeah, it's going to be weird. Um, you've been to Green Bay before, right? I haven't. I've never seen a game in Lambeau. Oh, my God. Okay. I would, I would love to see a game in Lambeau. But let, let's look yeah. at this game. So it's Aaron Rodgers coming off a bye. He had some sort of thumb injury that he was playing through. Um, now he has a time off. The Rams have a mini buy. We're mm-hmm. coming off of this. We were just talking about the energy in, in this building right now. Feels completely different after the Thursday night game. How, how are you looking to, to this game or what the Rams can do to sort of take on Aaron Rodgers, who doesn't necessarily have the weapons of years past? Like, this isn't the Aaron Rodgers of years past. Uh, he's making a few new ones. The guy can make – I think he's, he's made a new Jordy Nelson um, right now. So yeah. have quarterback, have great quarterback, you'll find weapons. Um, just give him multiple clay and something's going to happen. But um, I was thinking about this watching video and watching Baker Mayfield, and this is what – I was thinking in relation to Aaron Rodgers, Baker Mayfield is high energy. Right. He's all over the place. It's frenetic, right? When you watch Aaron Rodgers play, it's like the opposite. It's jazz. It's the the guy hardly moves unless he has to. You know what I mean? He lets his arm do the talking. So I know one is more sustainable than the other. So I hope the Sean McVay effect with with Baker Mayfield, you'll coach that part of football out of him and – make him use his arm more than his legs, if that makes any sense. Right. But watching Aaron Rodgers operate, um, it's a full-time job. It really is. He's got a black belt in quarterbacking. And he's seen whatever scheme you're going to throw at him, he's seen it at least four times and knows how to beat it. So right. you've got to be at your best at what you're trying to do schematically, and then you have to have at least two guys, maybe a pass rusher and somebody who defends the pass, 
that has to play above their head just to be in the game with him. Right. That's how good he is. Right. Right. What's the coldest game you've ever played in? Chicago 97. Okay. Weird. Okay. And uh, it really does affect your body. Like it's there's ridiculous. no way that you can't like and even some of these cold weather teams like you look at at, you know, the Patriots, they're like we're built to play in the cold. nobody's body is meant to play in the cold. So Aaron Rodgers, yes, they they may have more games in there, but like you have to be able to use that ball feels like an a brick of ice, doesn't oh, it? Oh, no doubt. Uh, some of those dudes are built for the cold, like those Michigan dudes, those Iowa, those South Dakota dudes. Yeah. Yeah, the guys that the guys you'll see this Sunday that aren't wearing sleeves. Right. Those are the ones that are built for this weather. Anybody in Buffalo right now is built for this weather. But me, Californian, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. But playing in Chicago. So, uh, it was negative six. Uh, and the announcer in the stadium announced it. The temperature is now six below. And Chicago went berserk. They went crazy and started taking off their clothes. Did you guys win that game? We won, barely. But I'm looking at these people take off their clothes when it's negative. I'm like, isn't it supposed to be the opposite? You guys are pe- you you people are crazy. When I was in high school, we would we would go skiing because I'm from the Northeast. So we would always like after school go skiing. And the last run of the day, we would take our shirts off and go down the mountain in just like a, a bra um, holding our jackets. What is wrong with you? Yeah, it was just like a fun thing that we did. What's what's fun about that? <laughs> I don't know. Just to say you did it. Um, and so guys, <laughs> girls, we would all we would all do it. And now I'm kind of wondering if maybe like I have some d- brain damage or see, something. Like, no, see, I always thought about it. the first time I met you. I said if if you were a guy, you'd be a center. You'd be an <laughs> offensive lineman. You are. See, you're proving it to me. You'd be. I that, don't know. Yeah. You just gotta be tough and and give what life is is given to you. And if that's taking your shirt off to go down a ski slope just to just to do it, to prove that you can, like, I'm going to do it. That is a Northeast thing. You know what I mean? No, 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 no. (laughs) No, I jump off cliffs. That's what I do. Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So how does having Baker under center change the dynamic of this Rams offense? You know what? Um, For Liam Cohen, for Sean McVay, uh, this is no disrespect to anybody else that's played quarterback for the Rams outside of Matthew Stafford. I mean, look, not all men are created equal in this game. Baker Mayfield is a better prospect. Uh, If there was a true quarterback competition starting from July 1st, I bet he would win it versus the other two. Right. Um, Arm strength, uh, talent, the it factor, everything. You should have seen the post-game locker room. It was odd. It really was. I mean, these guys were going berserk, so I'm trying to parse through Jordan it. Rodriguez yeah. talked about that they were playing music in there again. Awesome. So <laughs> It's like we haven't had music. That like Even that little factor, like the energy. It's been fun. Yeah. So you win, right? And you haven't won in what, six weeks, seven weeks, whatever yeah, it was? Six. The, the six weeks. Um, so you're happy to get the win. That alone will make you, the locker room explode. But they were all jumping around Baker Mayfield. That's the cool thing. I'm like, wow, this dude has brought a spark. And then I heard from Ben Skoranek on the way out. He said, I would go to war for this guy. Now, that's sacred in football. You don't just put that out for anybody. I mean, that means a lot. That means you would do a lot for this dude. Ben Skoranek, you mean Randy Moss? Is that who you're talking about? Look, he's a fullback. (laughs) Yeah, Randy Moss is not a fullback. So that was a fullback that caught that pass. Yeah, wild, wild. Special. So whatever it is, lightning in a bottle, um, could it be you just won and you're happy, or could it be that Baker Mayfield actually sparked this football team? I guess we'll find out on Monday. Yeah. To see Tutu as that, like, go-to guy, too, was so cool on that drive. For Van to get his first, like, game-winning touchdown drop. Like, it just – just everything about that game has me so excited going into Green Bay, and I think it's that spark that, that they really need. Okay, let's do the Ram Jam. So I ask all my guests the same three questions. Uh-oh. As a fan or a broadcaster or a player – which is your favorite Rams moment of all time? As a fan or? Or any, uh, your favorite Rams moment. Oh, Mike Jones making the tackle in the Super Bowl. Okay. Come on now, dude. That was it right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, seeing Mike Jones drop that guy uh, and he came up a yard short and hearing Dick Vermeil from the sidelines saying, that's it, we won it, woohoo, and then confetti. Awesome. Will always be my moment. Um, okay. The other one was Isaac Bruce catching the go-ahead touchdown. Yeah. Um. And then before that, Ricky Prohl catching the game-winning touchdown to beat Tampa Bay. Right. All-time favorite moments because in my heart of hearts, I was in despair. Like, oh my, like when you're praying for a play and then it happens. So It's a relief. Of- oh my God, I'll never forget that. Yeah. Wow. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Cheeseburgers. 
Okay. Yeah, I hate to say it. Cheeseburger is your go-to. I could I could eat a cheeseburger a day and not get tired of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes cool. twice a day. So this is a little tricky. What would you do if fear was not a factor and you could not fail? Fear is not a factor and I could not fail. Leather pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than fear. <laughs> more than fear. Uh, go to space, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Is that more fear? Or is that fear of death? Right. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I think I would be petrified to go yeah. to space. I think it'd be uh, cool to float in gravity, like no gravity or yeah, anti gravity. Is that boring? Zero is that a gravity? boring answer? That's not boring that's answer. Not boring. Going to space. Go to space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You could. Is there? Has there been a football player that's gone to space? I don't know. All right. Easy to enjoy. Question of the week. Okay. Before I let you go, you have to answer this. You can be one Star Wars character in a film, a remake, or a new one. Who do you choose and why? Oh, Vader. Really? Oh, Vader, first three. Yeah, the original first so three. So you are the villain. Oh, yeah. Well, no, actually, I'm a good guy. I just kind of lost my way. And right, at the very end, absolutely. You, you come back to Yes, it. Okay. I was seduced by the dark side, so right. it's not really me. But okay. Absolutely. So you want to be in leather after all. Got me. <laughs> Like, I mean, this just went full circle. <laughs> Got me. Wow. Wow. That could not have been written any better. Like, we couldn't have written the show. DeMarco, thanks so much for hanging out with me. No problem. I, Am I a jammy now? You are a full certified jammy. I and love it. We're going to end this recording, and you and I are going to go get a cheeseburger and have some barefoot wine. How about that? I'm in. Let's go. All right. When I signed off DeMarco, our producer did let me know that there has been an NFL player to go to space. What was his name, Rudy? Leland? Leland Melvin. So that's pretty freaking cool. You learn something new every every Ricky's Ram Jam Jammies. I got you for trivia. Uh, that does it for this week's Ricky's Ram Jam. Thanks so much for hanging out. For DeMarco Farr, that was fun. For Club Dub, we're heading to Green Bay. Get your mittens. Get your hand warmers. Wait, I'm going to actually be at a bar, so I'm going to be fine. But if you're going, support the Rams. Cheer as loud as you can, and I will see you next time. Let's ram it. Mm-hmm.